r slash ask reddit medical professionals of reddit what is the craziest diy treatment you've seen a patient attempt anesthesiologist here we had a patient come in for ind of bilateral deltoid abscesses he apparently had thoughts of being a bodybuilder but instead of lifting weights or knowing someone who could hook him up with some quality steroids he decided to bulk up by using some protein powder at gnc and mixing it with water, drawing it up into a syringe, and injecting 20-40cc daily directly into the muscle. If bulk was what he was going for, it definitely worked. Temporarily, a rip-roaring localized infection makes you look plenty swole. They got almost a liter of pus mixed with liquefied protein powder out of each deltoid. This also wasn't the first time he'd been in for this problem. My dad had an abscess on his face. It was huge, about the size of a golf ball and horribly red. It kept getting bigger. My mom, a nurse, kept telling him to go to the doctor. But my dad was a ridiculous cheap ass. One day when she was gone, we noticed that a big white head had formed on the abscess. And it was apparently ready to bust. My dad went out to the garage, got his shop vac, placed it over the white head and proceeded to suck out the abscess. It worked surprisingly well and healed up after that nicely. Mom was still furious, though. Paramedic here. Once had to explain to a family that putting lemon juice in the eyes of an unconscious patient isn't an approved treatment method. And no, it didn't work. It was an interesting moment when I had to explain why his eyes hurt. If I've learned anything from reading the comments here it's that some men will tolerate almost any amount of pain to avoid a doctor seeing whatever stupid shit they've done to themselves. This is no exception. I once spoke to a paramedic who went out to a man at 2am who had excruciating pain down below. The poor organ was wrapped tightly in soaking bandages, and underneath was a blackened penis with large pus filled holes in it. The man eventually admitted that he shoved a chicken bone, a clean one, whatever that means down his cog for pleasure predictably enough he couldn't get it out and being too embarrassed to go to the doctor he left it and left it until he was in so much pain he couldn't walk both from the rotted penis and the fact he hadn't been able to urinate for days apparently you could actually see the bone once the wound was clean and although not an expert my friend couldn't imagine that what was left was salvageable i had a guy come in for coughing and shortness of breath for the past few months his lungs sounded like absolute shit. Got a chest x-ray that looked horrible. So I did a CT scan. Radiologist called it the worst case of necrotizing pneumonia he'd ever seen. Dude had like a 15% functional lung tissue left. The patient then mentioned things had been worse after he started using a new breath freshener spray. He whipped out one of those blunt effects concentrated air freshener bottles. Supposed to cover up weed smell. Labeled not for internal use. Apparently he had been using it like vinegar spray. And had already gone through 3 bottles. In nursing school while I was on clinical rotation in urology. There was a man who ended up having his penis removed. It turned out he had an infection brewing for quite a while and thought the best course of action was placing a sock over his penis in hope that it would heal. He was generally confused and upset as to why this didn't work to heal the issue. One of my first clinic patients was a dude who was injecting a mixture of testosterone, human growth hormone, sesame oil, and sunflower oil into the base of his penis as a DIY penile enlargement therapy. Well, it got infected so he ended up going to the ED for incision and drainage. I saw him as a post ED visit and at that time, he figured that he shouldn't be injecting into his penis while it was healing. So instead, he was injecting his oil plus sketchy hormones off the internet concoction everywhere else into his body arms, legs, butt, shoulders, etc. Because he figured it would still have some effect. There's a myth that lowering someone's core temperature will save them from an opiate overdose. As a result, many first responders have arrived on scenes to find friends fellow users inserting ice into someone's rectum. Sometimes they don't have ice around though, which leads to getting inventive. Popsicles. Frozen hot dogs. My personal favorite, which regrettably I didn't witness myself. It was told to me by another medic, was a bag of frozen french fries. Cold will do nothing to help someone who is overdosing on heroin or other opiates. What they need is respiratory support, oxygen and or artificial ventilation, and naloxone, Narcan, if you're a user or no one. 
and somebody ODs. Call 911. Perform mouth to mouth and give Narcan if you have it, but leave the popsicles in the freezer. I work in dental and years ago had a patient attempt to super glue her front tooth back on after it broke in half. She screwed up and ended up gluing the chunk to her upper lip. This happened when I was still a med student doing a rotation in the ED. Patient comes in and is pretty vague about his actual complaint. Something about head pain but he looks just fine sitting waiting to be seen. When I finally get to see him and ask him what actually happened, he removes the hat he was wearing and a chunk of skin about the size of my hand literally flaps off of his skull. This guy managed to basically scalp himself, and apparently it had been like that for 3 days. According to him it was caused by falling in his bathroom and hitting his head on the toilet. He had been previously duct taping it down or using the hat to hold the skin on, but it wasn't sticking well and that's when his wife convinced him to come to the hospital. Pharmacist here, worked in a shop where a woman asked for some advice about potential UT or STI, told me she had bathed her vagina in bleach for 5 minutes to try and kill any bacteria, miraculously, she hadn't done any lasting damage. A 50 year old man swallowed a chicken bone while eating, and it got stuck down his throat, upper esophagus, unable to take it out with his fingers or coughing. He got a fisher hook with a line and tried to rescue the bone with it. He ended in an emergency department with both the bone and the hook in his esophagus. Edit to add some info. Both objects had to be extracted endoscopically, and then the patient recovered after receiving antibiotics in the hospital. Perforation of the esophagus causes mediastinitis infection of the space between the lungs which carries high mortality. An old lady told me the rain hurt her arthritis. That's reasonable. She also swore that dog spit had healing properties so she let her dogs lick her feet when she felt it coming on. She then wanted to show me a video of said dogs licking said feet. I swiftly and politely declined. Adult patient had gas and poked the hole in his belly button with basically a knitting needle to release it. Edit. It didn't work. He actually came in for the ensuing infection in his belly button. I work in oncology pharmacy. I had a patient die of totally treatable breast cancer because they decided to treat it with mistletoe instead of chemo. All because Suzanne Summers did. Yep, yeah, the thigh master lady. Don't take medical advice from the thigh master lady. The most heartbreaking thing I've seen is a desperate husband bring his wife in at death's door. They were young with two kids under 10. She'd been diagnosed with breast cancer and didn't like what her oncologist was telling her. Shit's terrifying to be fair. She then left the UK so all chemo surgery free at point of access, and followed the alternatives practices recommended by some witch doctor in her own country. By the time husband dragged her back she was too far gone. Had spread to so many organs. Trouble with breathing. Groggy seizures from brain meds. I work an ED. I don't know how oncologists and palliative care teams do what they do. Of all the horrible traumas I've dealt with this is one of the most upsetting cases I've ever picked up. A little late to this thread but have a weird one. A patient was told by her doc that she had low magnesium and should consider supplements. Not uncommon. Instead of getting MG supplements, she ate an entire tub of homeopathic volcanic ash and completely destroyed her electrolyte imbalance and ended up in IQ. We admitted her as a pharmaceutical overdose so poison control automatically follows up with you. It was hard to explain to them. Edit. It was probably naturopathic. Not homeopathic. I don't know enough about specific differences. Think of a tub of protein power. But volcanic ash. Her husband brought it in for the poison control report. You were supposed to mix a scoop in water for the health benefits. She ate the whole tub and had a seizure and wrecked her kidneys. The activated charcoal volcanic ash vomit that was all over her when she came from Emerg was a beach to clean up. A mentally delayed woman came in septic to the ED. Dids rays. Blood cultures. Urine cultures. The works. Finally found this weird image on her pelvis film. And we had Jin come do a pelvic exam. They pulled out this blob with bones in it. Y'all. I swear to god. It was a decomposing frog. She put it in her vagina for safekeeping. She got toxic shock syndrome from a frog. Edit. Just realized that the topic was about DIY treatment. And my story doesn't really match it. I guess there wasn't anything she was trying to fix. Except maybe the lack of frogs in her vagina? Not me. But my boss. Mother of the child I care for. 
is a nurse practitioner. I asked her what the worst thing she had witnessed was. She continued on to tell me the story of a man who had stapled his ball sack together and onto his body after slipping with the razor. He had it that way for days. Metal holding his poor testicles in place. Infected and gross as you would expect. Before he came to a professional. Later admitted his ex attempted to castrate him. The balls lived. Dude came to the ED because his leg was swollen. I'm talking. Like. Twice the size of his other leg. It turned out that his fourth and fifth toes were getting caught on his sock. Which, to be fair, sounds super annoying. So he cut them the duck off, with scissors, and then it got infected. And he waited, and waited, and that's how he lost his entire ducking leg. Long story but, had a young teenager with sickle cell disease who had been in the hospital for around a week already who decided to manage his pain himself. This was a few years ago, but I caught him pretending to take his meds, he would coke his head back and gesture that the pill went into his mouth but really he either kept it in his hand or threw the pill behind his back and landed somewhere in his bed. He was also quite a talker, which I then assumed was a tactic to try and distract me. I kept seeing his odd behavior and caught him doing this a 2-3 times by the middle of the shift so I was definitely onto him. He had a PICC line, which is essentially a long IV where the tubing goes all the way to your heart, in his left arm, and I noticed that it was quite a bit more swollen compared to his other arm. Sometimes clots can happen in PICC lines, so that was my biggest concern at first, but the line was drawing blood fine so I know it wasn't clotted off, told the doc. Then I drew blood from his PICC line and sent it down to the lab for it to be cultured to see if there was any bacteria. Lo and behold it came back positive for a bacteria that is commonly found in tap water, and usually not a source of infection in infected PICC lines. Fast forward a few hours later he confessed that with any oral medication, pill form, he can slip by the nurses, he saved for later in order to crush them up himself. Try to dissolve it with sink water in the bathroom, every room had a private bathroom, and inject it in himself via his PICC line. Having once seen a commercial that oatmeal can lower cholesterol a patient started having chest pains and tried to resolve it with a bowl of oatmeal. We had a guy come in with an abscess on his right thumb. When I asked him what happened to his hand, he told me about his recent deep sea fishing trip and was given the responsibility of cutting the fish with an open wound in his hand. A sliver of fish got in there and became infected as it healed. So this guy gets the bright idea of doing a little DIY wound drainage by grabbing his pocket knife and cutting it open, leading to a greater infection. As a child I got really bad sunburn. The person looking after me coated my sunburn in baby oil to help it heal, and sent me back out into the sun. I realized when I was older why my mum went nuts. My mom once melted Vicks vapor rub into my tea because she thought that would help my cold. It didn't. I know people who would do this, more than one of them, they'd swear by Vicks Vapor Rub, and kind of treated it like a cure all. Neighbor came over to borrow a chainsaw, I noticed he had a thick bandage around his arm and asked him what happened, he said he fell out of a tree last week and cut his arm, I asked if he got stitches and he said he just wrapped it and his family is praying over it, about 4 days later I seen his wife and she said he was really sick and may have the flu? Come to find out he had septicemia and dying. He died a week later of kidney failure and sepsis. I was getting a kick out of all the stories on here, but this one is just sad. Putting a sex toy up the rectum to better reach another, larger sex toy. I just read the other day about a dude who got a dildo stuck up there and then got the kitchen tongs he was using to extract said dildo stuck up there too. Patient used to get boners in class and it embarrassed him so he used rubber bands to prevent it. Ended up killing the tissue in his penis and now he needs a catheter for life. A man who'd accidentally sliced his leg open at his workplace. He obviously figured that as surgeons use staples to close wounds. He'd cut out the trip to hospital and DIY with an ordinary desk stapler. Arrived in ED with a pus filled wound with the odd discolored staple hanging off it some days later. I am not a medical professional, but my father-in-law had severe skin cancer. He basically had an open sore on his back for several years that bled and bled. We never knew about it until one day we saw a pancake-sized crater through his shirt. 
went to the hospital finally and they basically said he has cancer throughout his whole body at this point. His response was he thought it was a cut that wouldn't heal and put gauze and neosporin on it. Edit. Since folks are curious, yes he is still alive but they didn't give him much time left. They managed to treat the wound but the cancer spread into his organs and bones. The sad part is it could have been avoided if he just went to the doctor years prior. But that is unfortunately the common mindset in a lot of older folks. White bread soaked in milk placed on an armpit abscess to draw out the infection. Needed an IND and a couple weeks of IV antibiotics by the time he got to us. Either that or the guy who crashed his motorbike. Scraped his leg all to hell. And then decided the best course of action was to self cauterize it on the tailpipe. When I worked in a my colleague had to see a guy with an ear problem. He had something stuck in his ear and had been trying to get it out. This wasn't a new thing. He'd been trying for some time. Turned out, he had completely removed his time panic membrane. And the bits that were stuck in his ear and that he was trying to pick out with cotton buds and hair clips were his ossicles. Enjoy. Had a patient come into the ear with a makeshift bandage on his shin. He had fallen on rocks while hiking and left a 3 inch long, half inch deep gash in his leg. I go to pull the bandage off and as I am peeling it away I notice the skin is completely black and there's dark chunks of fungus falling out of the wound. It looked necrotic. Like it had been left alone for a week. I look at this guy like he's crazy as he tells me the wound is only a few hours old. He's pretty proud as he explains that he created a makeshift poultice by chewing up leaves and moss. Mixing it with river mud and stuffing it into his leg. That's what all the black mossy stuff was. Hint. Don't do this. My grandpa thought a leg discrepancy was causing my back pain. Which was causing spasms. He put several pieces of cardboard in my shoes to try to even out my legs which were already even. He also thinks black beans cure everything. My dad thought those pesky spasms was a pinched nerve. So he would take me to the chiropractor. His girlfriend. To get my neck cracked when it happened. Seizures. People. They were seizures. My stepfather thought he had an boil of some sort on his arm a few years ago. So he did what any middle aged dad would do. Cut the sucker open and poured hydrogen peroxide on it. Turns out it wasn't a boil but a form of skin cancer. Also turns out that hydrogen peroxide doesn't do much to help with melanoma. After a lot of one sided discourse he went to the doctor to get it checked and treated. He's now cancer free. I work in the ear at a trauma center. This guy comes in with his little girl and says that she was bit in the face by the family German Shepherd. I immediately take her back assuming that I need to control bleeding. What I encounter is a little girl with a laceration going all the way from over her left eye crossing her nose and mouth. It is not bleeding whatsoever and it seems to have an odd looking substance inside. So I obviously ask the dad what she got inside it. He responds very proudly with, ah yes. I pack the wound with tobacco from my cigarettes and super glue. Left double quotation mark. Poor thing. During third year med school I was on a neonatology rotation. Lots of premature babies or high risk births. We'd get code green page to us for please come to delivery room as able and code pink page for please come to delivery room stat. There was a pager that was the standard one that got paged for this. And usually it was whichever of us med students who was on call carrying it. Our job was then to get one of the nurse practitioners and possibly a second nurse and head over with the incubator etc. To take the baby and get him her to the NICU. About 6pm one evening as we're doing handover rounds. That pager goes off with a code pink. Then the NP's personal pager. Then the neonatologist's personal pager. The next 10 minutes are a bit of a scramble and not particularly interesting from the point of view I had. As I was assigned to send pages to additional people and fetch things. But in short. A teenage lady of local aboriginal descent had come in suffering from very premature labor. I want to say 20 weeks. But could have been 22 or so. She and her ex-boyfriend had recently gotten back together. He had discovered she was pregnant. Believing that the baby was not his. He attempted to abort the baby by inserting a bamboo stick and trying to fish it out. She did not want said abortion so he attempted while she was asleep. Baby and mother survived. Relationship did not. Later testing showed the baby was indeed his for those wondering. Dental student here. 
We had a patient who declined a much needed cleaning saying he could do it just as well a home with a scalpel. Didn't brush his teeth but every few weeks he would go at the accumulated plaque and tartar with a scalpel. Same patient also insisted we do a procedure without local anesthetic. He was an amateur boxer and was building up his pain tolerance. Double angle quotation mark. He also told us he smoked 20 blunts a day and only drank coke. We could tell. One time, when I was in nursing school, I was doing a clinical and a guy came in with penile pain. Long story short, several days prior, he decided he wanted a penile texture implant to help enhance pleasure during intercourse for his lady friend. He and his buddy got drunk of course, and decided to do it themselves. So they went in his garage and took a box cutter to slice open the skin on the dorsal, top, side of his penis. Made some room between the skin and underlying muscle, and put a small porcelain heart underneath. Then he super glued it shut. To make matters worse, the guy didn't wait for it to heal and decided to take it for a test run. He ended up with a major infection and presented several days later. I unfortunately don't know the outcome. I was just there for the porcelain heart extraction. Can't make this shit up. I've now worked in a surgical trauma IQ as an RN for 2 years. And people never cease to amaze me. Edit. Spelling. Oh the stories I have even as a student. One particular one that stuck with me was a lady who came into the hospital with back pain. Seeing as A&E is usually packed, back pain isn't considered too high on the list. When she was finally seen to, we discovered the source of the pain. She had tried to remove the carcinoma from her back that spanned from her neck to the bottom of the ribs. It had gotten infected and to top that off, she had decided to use homeopathy to treat her cancer. How she had neglected to mention that or had survived so long still surprises me. Not a doctor, but this seems to fit the question. I recently had an attempted vasectomy where I learned I'm allergic to lidocaine and had to spend some time in the ear as a result. I was talking with the adoc, older doc, probably in his 60s and close to retirement. He relayed a story from one of his mentors who was a doctor in a small, rural hospital. This hospital, or clinic, closed down at night for the most part as there wasn't much need for it and this doc decided that he and his wife had enough kids and decided to give himself a vasectomy, by himself. In the middle of the procedure he passed out, came to a few minutes later, and finished the procedure. Dot. I've heard of doctors doing self-surgery in crisis situations, like appendicitis in Antarctica if memory serves, but why would you voluntarily do your own vasectomy? Had a patient come to the a for a cough, we did a chest x-ray that caught a little something in the abdomen pelvis, did a pelvic x-ray, long story short she stuck a shot glass up her vagina for birth control left it up there long enough for it to calcify and we had to surgically remove it. Not at all DIY, but one of my friends dad back home was an a doctor, and he had a patient come in with 5 plus snake bites, mostly on his hands and arms. The patient said he got bit by a snake and tried to catch the snake so he could bring it in for the doctor to identify it. Luckily the snake wasn't venomous. Saw the young child, about age 6-7, with a bruised swollen crooked forearm. He had fallen on the playground three days earlier and another parent there was a vet and had horse x-ray equipment in his truck. That parent took x-rays and told mom he was probably fine. So that was apparently good enough for mom and she didn't do anything for 3 days while he was up all night screaming in pain. Finally she took him into my office and brought me the fuzzy copies of the x-rays which were useless and impossible to accurately interpret. I got him real x-rays and a nice cast for his broken arm. This patient wasn't one I saw, but my brother worked for a PCP in our hometown. There was a guy who had a rare condition that required bloodletting. But he didn't have the money to afford the treatment as often as he would need it, like any rational human being. He decided to build an apparatus at home using a shop vac, mason jars, an IV needle and surgical tubing, so he had no issues for a few weeks. Just set the vacuum to pull the blood through the tubing via the needle and drain into the mason jars. No big deal. One day he isn't paying attention and sets the vac to blow instead of pull. Dude switched it off after a few seconds. But he still had a massive air embolism. He's very lucky he didn't die. He just had a major stroke. He goes in for treatment now the last I heard. Whoa. 
You made it to the end, you're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price.